Hey guys, this is a, a recording outside of the class. I just wanted to come on to explain what happened in the fifth class. So in the fifth class, we started our presentation and what happened was we um, had some unique visitors to our site, which were uh, Zoom bombers. I'm not sure if they were sent to the call or they just showed up, but so happens we had them and class number five didn't go as planned. So um, if you are looking at this recording, you will know that class five and six was meshed together because of that, um, because the bombers were on there um, causing um, a disruption in the class that most people weren't able to grasp the concept of five, even though we went through it. And so if you are interested in knowing what happened in class five, this is the video that is posted. Um, however, if you are looking to learn about what happened in class five, class five and six is all together and it is labeled. So I just wanted to let you know that that's exactly what happened. And um, if you're interested in being amused by the bombers, um, you can take a look at class five, all right? So I hope you enjoy all the videos and all the content that I have put on. Um, make sure you uh, subscribe and like. I will put out lots of other videos. I'm getting into the video streaming now. More people are asking me for trainings and I am much obliged, right? So I will do a, um, some more trainings, um, but basically I just wanted to get on to give you guys an inside tip on what happened, but we survived it, right? So there you go, bombers. We survived, right? Okay, so guys, I'll see you in the next one, okay? So see you there. Yeah, okay. Right, and I didn't record it. I'm sorry. Really quick, right? This is Jill, so I'm um, Jill's Sillionaire's so Cafe. Thank you for signing up. Uh, this is not financial advice. This is for informational and educational purposes only. This content may contain my personal views and alleged information. This is a lineage platform. And you go back to the person who invited you. No selling, no soliciting, no cross recruiting. Okay, so I just want to get to the point of where we were before because I wasn't recording it and I wasn't screen sharing. I'm so sorry. I just took up a little bit of your time. But if you see this content, table of contents, this is what we had already went through where you say completed. This is what we are going to do today is blockchain, hash, crypto investments, staking, and NFTs, right? So, as I said before, the summary for, you can find this on my YouTube channel. Uh, summary for week one is the evolution of money. We see how that all um, lead up to um, cryptocurrency. It was a Nixon shock, subprime um, market, uh, Occupy Wall Street, uh, Robin Hood, AMC, all of these led up to the creation of cryptocurrency, which was the birth of Bitcoin. And then came along Ethereum and CeFi and DeFi. If you don't know what this is, I suggest you go to my YouTube channel and check out that video, right? Oops, sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what happened just now. Just now. Uh, this is, it's still a good day, guys. It's still a good day. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. It just jumped to another, and it had to be me. It had to be me. Let's get it, let's get it back on track. It had to be me. I did something wrong, right? All right. I'm just on speed right now. All right. So we were we were going to. All right. All right. So then we came to week two. And we find out that tokens uh, and coins and NFTs are all digital assets and that coins and tokens are a little bit different and that there is a thing that's stable because you know coins are volatile and tokens are volatile, but there are stable tokens, which are sometimes referred to as stable coins and there are NFTs, right? So another thing that you can go and look at my, um, my, um, YouTube channel to find out about that. 
And then it was um, week three, we talked about wallets and why do we need wallets? We need wallets to store our coins and our tokens. And there are hot wallets, warm wallets, cold wallets. And again, that video is posted in my YouTube channel. All right, so now this is the place where we should be at right now. <laughs> we are at the blockchain and the blockchain. So the blockchain is a system in which a recorded transaction that is made through your, you know, when you're sending your coins, remember we talked about network, how you send your coins, right? Your coins are your tokens and it, it records it. So a blockchain is how your crypto travels on the software. So if you look at this little thing here that have chains on it, that's why it's called the blockchain because at each block, remember those miners are verifying the process. So they have to match, right? And we'll see how that works later on. But blockchain is where it was when your transaction is being verified. Okay. So let's do story time, right? I love story time. So this is Jill and she no longer wants to be a part of the centralized C5. Again, for people who don't know what C5 is, go check out um, week one video on YouTube. But it's a banking system that is affiliated by the government and the banks, right? So how C5 works, you, you make a transaction, you put your money in your bank, you either pay for it between PayPal, um, whatever, credit cards, mm, cash app, and then it goes to the other person's bank, and then it goes to them. At any time in the middle where you see the Visa transaction, your transaction can be disrupted, right? So Jill said, hey, I heard about this space called cryptocurrency, right? So they are DeFi. So she decides to enter the decentral, um, decentralized uh, finance, which is called DeFi world, where she can become her own banker, right? Because the other banking system isn't working for her. So she wants to be her own banker. And if you look down at the bottom, she's the sender. The blockchain is where she's verifying her information. And once it's verified, it's going to the person she's sending it to, right? All right, so in order for Jill to enter the DeFi world, she first had to put some things in order. She had to get a cryptocurrency wallet. It's like a banking app wallet. And then she had to purchase some cryptocurrency, right? So what she decides to do, after looking at so many choices, Jill decides to get a crypto.com wallet. Just like a banking, it just like have it's like a, having a banking app, just like a Chase banking app or Bank of America, Wells Fargo, all those things, right? But as she's signing up for the crypto.com wallet, she had to KYC. So KYC means know your customer. It's not know your customer meaning you, it's meaning that crypto.com have to know their customer. So they ask you to verify with your ID, right? So once you verify with her ID, crypto.com gives an option to add her debit or credit card to it from her C5 bank, which is her bank that is affiliated with the government. And once she got that all locked up together, she purchases um, a token, which is called USDT, by taking the money from her C5 bank and putting it into her crypto wallet, okay? All right, so we're talking about blockchain. So we'll get to how this blockchain works in this story scenario, okay? So... She purchased, a, um, she did her crypto.com wallet. She got some USDT, right? And so now she wants to send some, a um, thousand USDT to this place called cashflownft.net to purchase a share of a startup company, which is called Miracle Cash and More. It's like a startup franchise company, right? And so... She has to gather some information in that. So we remember that from, you know, week four, right? That she has to gather some information. So what is the information she needs to gather? She needs to get the address for 
cash flow NFT. So she can send it to them. And she, when she looks at the address, she has to know what network that she is going to use to send it. So she has some key things to find out. So she found those out. And after plugging in the information in her crypto.com wallet, it worked like this. And this is where the blockchain comes into play. So here's the blockchain, right? So think of the blockchain like a train. Your train is called whatever your network is. So in this particular scenario, this train is called the TRC20 train, right? So we know that is the network because that is the one that's going to be driving your coins to its location. But if you take a look at those things that are those words that are sideways, we think of ourselves, if we're sending it, we think we think of ourselves as the departing train, right? Our train is departing from our train station. And that train station have to have certain information in it, right? So if you see the departure, it says from Jill, right? And this is the train station we're leaving from. We're leaving from this train station where the address starts with a T, right? Right there, that tells us that we are leaving from a train station that is running on the TRC network. And how we know that? Because this address starts with a T. So we know it's the TRC network, right? And what are we sending on that train? We're sending a token that's called USDT. So remember, if the address starts at the departing um, station with a T and it's going on the TRC train, it needs to end up at a T address, okay? And if, you if I'm sending USDT token on that train, it needs to be sent to a USDT address. The same coin has to be on, a, on, on the opposite side. So when it's departing, it should be a T address and the, same, and the token that needs to be sent. So that token or the coin, whichever one, but in this scenario, it is USDT it should be USDT on their arrival. So where, what is their arrival? Their arrival is cash flow NFT. So do they address start with a T? Of course it does, because that's the way it's going to verify. Is it on the TRC train? Yes. Does the um, token match? Yes, USDT. So we have all the information. So if you look down here, on the green, it says what have to match, right? The network have to match. You have to make sure you're sending it. Whatever one they ask you to receive it on, you have to be sending it on. And that network is the TRC20. Number two, does the token match or the coin match? Yes, because I'm sending USDT to a USDT address, right? Okay, so... Do can we verify that it's the correct? Um, we're sending um tokens or coins on a correct address. Yes, we can verify it because if it's a TRC network, that address is going to start with a T that you're sending it from, and that address is going to start with a T, the one you're sending sending it to, right? So those have to match. And guess what? Once it all match, it's so beautiful. That train goes right to the train station. It leaves from that train station and it goes right to the receiving train station or the rival one with no problems. It's there, right? Okay, so I hope we all understand that. So again, I put arrows on this to show you what have to match. If you notice, take, take a little time and look at it. The yellow addresses, I mean, the yellow arrows are pointing to the tokens that shows you that it's the same on the left, that same on the right. And then it's saying that is a TRC train, that TRC train, yes, it's a TRC train. And we know that it's going on the same address because if you see the black arrows, it's pointing to the T's to show you that you have verified 
that this is going to be a success. So we always really, really check, check over and over. Because guess what? The more times you check, the more confident you are. And guess what? The less mistakes you're going to make. Remember, you are your own banker. So in this scenario, you're not calling Chase. You're not calling Bank of America. You're not calling, you're not calling um, Wells Fargo or you're calling the central bank. You're calling the bank of self, okay? Because you are your own banker. So, all right. So remember in the blockchain, it's like a 5,000 piece puzzle. So the information you put in have to check out. Remember all those mining computers? They have to verify it at each block verify that that information is correct. Is this um, um, TRC um, 20? Yes, TRC 20. Does the address start with a T? Yes, it has to start with a T. Is it the same token or coin? Yes, it's the same token or coin. So that's what it goes through, that blockchain where all the mining goes on, where they're verifying every little block of information. That's what happens, right? So what happens? So this is the mining. So I just wanted to show you this again. Remember, mining is all these computers. And if you notice, they kind of look like little blocks, right? So blocks from all around the world, different computers are checking the process to verify it. And this is where, when you are asking what are gas fees, you are paying these people who own these computers the fees for verifying your transaction on the blockchain. Actually, this process happens with your normal bank. But the thing is, is that you don't see it because the banker and the bank is taking care of this behind the scenes. And when you're your own banker, you have to know the process. So you know what? Some of you guys may wind up owning a crypto bank. All right. So here we have it again. I just wanted to show you the difference um, in the main banking system. It's held in one central bank, all these computers, and these are very hackable because all you have to do is go into the mainframe, which so many people did and just took money out of banks and what they did, you know, because it's all in one place and then they can hack thousands and thousands of accounts. I'm quite sure you heard of, or you've probably been a victim of your bank being hacked and they're stealing your personal information. So that's how it happens. But in this case, when you're in a DeFi place and DeFi space, and when you're with cryptocurrency, there are computers all around the world. They can be in people's homes, but not one computer can verify um, your account. There are, from what I understand, the minimum of 5,000 computers, and that's why it's less hackable. So I just wanted to refresh your memory on that, okay? So what happens? So let's just have a visual of how this works, right? So remember I said that 5,000 computers and this is how it works. So remember I had your, your train, right? And the information is still the same on the size, but basically this is how they verify. It goes through the first block and it says B, capital B. Yes, that computer verifies it's a capital B. I know it seems a little um, overwhelming, but just take a look at it slowly, right? Just follow me on this. If it says lowercase l in that block right here in this blue block, that computer, that next computer, which can be in Africa, have to verify that it's a lowercase l. So let's just say the O, maybe that O computer is in Australia. It have to verify that it's a lowercase o and so on and so forth for that transaction to go from the departing station to the arrival station. So this is the process that it's going through when you actually send it. As soon as you press send or confirm, this is where it goes through. This is the process it goes through until it reaches the person you are sending it to, okay? All right, so I wanted to give you a, an example of what if you make that mistake? What if things are not matching? You see this chain in the middle? It broke. And then your money is lost because things didn't match, right? So let's just go through a couple of things that could go wrong, right? So let's say that 
in your address or in the process of verification. Somebody put a, a capital B, but it was a lowercase b, it won't go through no matter what. Even though it's the, it's, you know, it's the same character, but if it's a lowercase versus and and they have verified that it's um a capital, it won't go through. Or say so happens you put the wrong, the wrong letter popped up and that N, right? And they say, oh, it's supposed to be a Z. Mm -mm. Or let's say you decided you wanted to send Bitcoin to a TRC, to a token TRC address. Not gonna work. It have to match. It have to match. Okay. Things have to match. The process have to match in order for it to go. Right. So, so to avoid you having these anxious, anxious feelings, we have this technique that is known in the crypto world that you always check. You check four times, right? You check four times that it's the correct token. You check four times that you're on the same network. You check four for four, meaning you check the first four of the address and you check the last four of the address so you can make sure. And you always, always copy and paste the address or you use the QR code because the address is so long and it's made up of so many different characters, lowercase, highercase, numbers, all that stuff. It is very, very difficult to type it in. And that is a way to make mistakes. So you always, so if you notice down here, I have the red circles where it says the QR code, the red circles around the first four and the last four, actually that is five, but um, yeah, <laughs> I think the circle couldn't go for, but anyway, you check the first four and the last four, okay? So we don't want you to have these feelings, right? So take your time in this process because remember, you're not calling Chase. You're not calling Wells Fargo. You're not calling um, the central bank. You're not calling um, Bank of America. You are calling the bank of self. So when you make this mistake, you go in your bathroom or you go wherever you have a mirror and you look in the mirror and say, okay, I screwed up. How do I learn how to do this differently? So the next time it does not happen. But if you follow these steps, you will avoid many, many of these problems. And a lot of people, in the crypto space, and they know this, um, people who have been in this for a minute, what happens is they know that they uh, had this problem at one time or another or someone close to them and they learned very handsomely, right? Okay, so once you are completed and that train goes smoothly without any interruption to that arrival station, you get is what is called the hash. And the hash is basically a receipt. It's the same thing as when you are sending, um, you know, a cash app and you get that confirmation that is sent. Well, behind that confirmation is actually a code for the bank. Because remember, we're our own bankers. So you don't get that cute little notification that says, thank you for your transaction. Your transaction has been completed. Basically, you get a hash as your receipt, right? So a hash is basically your receipt. It's basically a receipt that says that your process has been computed, completed. And this is where you can verify your information. And if you plug that, that receipt number into the internet, it will show you where your um, process has been completed and you know what address it's been sent to. And that's really your confirmation, right? So hash kind of works like this. It's, it's very, very similar to uh, um, address and how you get that hash is basically each block when it says verify, it, it collects a code and it adds to the address along, along, along the way. So each part of it comes from any of those 5,000 computers that you know verify it by each step, right? So you get your receipt and you basically, that is the receipt that says your hash that says, hey, you completed your transaction. So this is a way that if some somebody on the other end didn't get it, you're like, hold up, wait a minute, uh-uh, I got the hash and I know that you received it and I'm gonna prove that to you unless you sent it to a different address and you didn't realize it, <laughs> okay? And that you have to do your 444 for it, right? All right, so that is the end of this part of the story. And so I hope that you actually understand 
how the block blockchain worked. And that was actually the last, um, that was like class five. Basically, that was the lesson from class five, right? So now we're going to move on to class six. And we're going to talk about investing into cryptocurrency. There are many, many ways, but I'm going to give you two of probably the most common, right? But there are many, many other ways. Um, we're not going to talk about any companies. I'm not going to talk about companies you can get into or anything like that. I am just going to go through examples so you can understand how they actually work. So the first one I'm going to go through is NFTs. I got this video from my sister, which explains NFTs and how they operate, I mean, the basic way as possible. And he is so strong with this message that it is profound, okay? So I'm going to go through that little video clip so he can explain it to you. And then we're going to talk about staking, okay? All right, here's the video. So Tory Lanez listed his album as an NFT. He sold the album for a dollar. People bought the album for a dollar. Then they resold it for a higher price over and over and over and over and over and over again. Every time it was resold, he got a percentage of those sales. So he set it up for the purpose of people reselling his album. He made a million dollars in 50 minutes. And then he made another $400,000 after it was resold. Y'all got to understand. I'm going to play that one more time. Wait, I'm going to play that one more time for you guys because it is important to hear it again. Okay? It's important to hear it again. Listed his album as an NFT. He sold the album for a dollar. People bought the album for a dollar. Then they resold it for a higher price over and over and over and over and over and over again. Every time it was resold, he got a percentage of those sales. So he set it up for the purpose of people reselling his album. He made a million dollars in 50 minutes. And then he made another $400,000 after it was resold. I got to understand. So hearing that and people get a little skeptical about what you can do and how, I mean, what type of investments can get, um, get people millions and millions of dollars. This is a perfect example of how that happened with NFTs, right? So people always say, you know, they're really, really skeptical, but, oh, you know, crypto, it's, you know, it's this, it's that. Yeah. There are a lot of things that go on in crypto and there are a lot of different layers, but there is a lot of opportunity to make, you know, extraordinary amounts of money. And this was a perfect example of that. So basically this is how NFTs usually work. And we talked about artwork and how that works, right? Well, this is how it worked in artwork. This is how it works with mortgages, I mean, with real estate. Anytime you have an NFT and it's set up that you can make a profit off of it every time it's sold, that means that you will always get um, a return on that particular thing every time it's sold, unless there is a limited amount. So let's just get take for an example, right? Let's say that you wanted to um, sell your house and you said, you know what? I'm going to put it into an NFT because guess what? I want to make a return on it every time it's sold. So you sell that house. And if it was sold five times over, you are getting a return off of it five times. If it's been sold 10 times over, you are going to get a return off of it 10 times, right? So basically that's what he said Tory Lane did. Tory Lane, he actually put his his album up for a dollar because he knew that people were going to resell it for higher and higher price. And guess what, guys? He made over a million dollars in 50 minutes. So that could tell you that how powerful NFTs are. Okay. All right. So let's move on to staking. Staking is another popular way to earn passive income on your crypto investments. So when you think about staking, it's kind of like 
a high yield savings account. You know how you put your money into the bank and they ba they basically say, hey, you want to make some returns, you know, put your money over here in this investment and then you leave it there. And then over time, you make a percentage off of it, right? So basically what they do is they tell you, oh, you're going to make this amount over this period of time and, you know, you'll get your return, right? So that's what staking is. So let's get into the next example. So basically staking is staking your money or your coins. Well, in this example, it's coins and tokens. So if you look at the example, just imagine this is a coin and token times the time you leave it there will equal your return. So if you see at the bottom, I have staking times the time equals your profit. Basically, that's what staking is. So story time. <laughs> So while Jill is making great strides in the crypto space, she decided to dive into staking. Let's see how that worked out. All right, so Jill learned that staking was a lot like investment funds. You lend your coins, which is technically your money in, in crypto space, coins or tokens, and you earn an interest. So Jill took 2K of USDT and purchased Bitcoin and stake the Bitcoin. And this is how a lot of people in Bitcoin was making um, extraordinary amounts of money because what people were doing was buying the Bitcoin and holding on to it and letting it grow after a while, right? Same concept. So the stake in terms was 54% um, annualized yield on seven days. So I have an equation if you want to take a screenshot of it, because a lot of people think that if you say 54%, that means they are going to get that 54% off of that in the seven days. Nope, doesn't work like that, guys. This is the equation. So what you do is you take 54% because it says annualized, right? So that means annually, and you times that by 365 days right? It's a time, no, divide it by 365 days. And when you divide it, then you times it by how many days they want you to, um, you want you to keep it there. And that was seven days. And that equal the percentage that you will get each day, right? So then you take that, that percentage, oh, excuse me, that percentage. And what you do is you times it by how much you're going to put in there. And that will tell you what your profit is over the seven days. And in this case, what I did was I took 54% and divided it into 365 days because it's analyzed, right? And then I times it by how many days they want me to leave it there, seven days. And what I'm going to get is 0.01% for those seven days, right? And then you take the seven days, the seven days percentage, which is a zero um, 0.1%, and then you times it by how much you want to put in. So with Jill's example, she put in 500 USDT. So what did that equal? She got $50 in USDT, well, 50 USDT tokens for seven days. And that's what she earned in the seven days. So be very, very mindful when you are staking that you make sure that you don't think that you're getting 54%, you know, meaning you're going to be doubling your money or your coins or tokens at that time. Actually, you have to make sure that it's set, if it says daily, then you're in a different space. But if it says annualized, then you have to divide it by the 365 days, is which is the amount of days in a year. Okay. All right. So uh, to end out this story, um, basically by the end of the year, uh, this is the way Jill's portfolio looked. She got her crypto.com wallet. She brought some cryptocurrency and right now she have uh, Dogecoins, which, I mean, Dogecoins, which is a token, but a very valuable token. It's not, it's not one of the, it's one of the tokens that made the mark. You know what I'm saying? Made the mark. It's pretty much very similar to Bitcoin, like the, the value, the value that it have upon it. Not meaning that 
it's, you know, worth, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars, but it has a, um, how do I say, um, a, a reputation value of a coin, but it is a token. USDT, remember, it is stable. She has 5,000 in USDT, and then she has 35 Bitcoin. And to keep her investments going, she has some NFTs with cash flow NFT. Then she has Tory Lane's album. And then she has some other cash flow NFT. And then she has Roxy Panda Days NFT, is what she brought off of OpenSea, one of the artists that are on there. Okay. So basically, that is it. So quiz time, guys, quiz time. And I strongly, strongly suggest you stay to the end. I have some lovely, lovely things going on um, there. So we're going to get into quiz time because I'm going to test your knowledge on what you heard, okay? All right, so this is not something that is going to be graded. This is not something that is going to, um, you know, like me going to grade you or if you get it wrong. It's just to test your knowledge, just to test your knowledge to see you know, um, what you remember. And if you don't remember anything and you um, so happens to uh, get one of the questions wrong and you don't know why, please ask in Q&A, okay? All right, so first question, guys. And this is a true or false, right? So um, if we can, June, we can unmute people so they can um, express their answers. And you can also use the chat to make sure that you, um, so if you wanna, uh, if you want to unmute, you can, um, June, are we ready for that or? Yes, everybody should be able to unmute when they okay. need to. So if you, if you are, if you want to, uh, you know, show your knowledge and yell it out, I say, even if you are wrong, this is a learning platform. Mistakes are to be made to learn. You know, we all have those, those, um, those trials that we have to get things a lot wrong to get them right. And that's the best time. You should really hope for mistakes. You really should, because the, the, the quicker you make mistakes, the quicker you learn, the better off you are, right? So let's get into it. If you want to scream it out, go right ahead. If you want to use the chat and put it in there, that's fine too, right? So your crypto transaction travels through the blockchain process to be verified. Is that true or false? True. 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 Oh, let's see who's right. True. true. Yes. For those who got it right, true. It does travel on there to verify. Okay. All right. Next one. It takes one computer to verify a crypto transaction. True or false? Oh. False. 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 Right. It takes approximately 5,000 computers to verify one transaction. So that's why they have so much. And that's why um, you probably heard the concept that it's taken up a lot of energy because there's so many computers that, you know, you know, verify your transaction. And that's to avoid hacking, manipulation and all the other things. Right. So we love that. All right. Next question. Mining is when many computers around the world verify your crypto transaction on a blockchain. True, True. or false? True. 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 Yes, guys. <laughs> I'm like a proud, I'm like a proud instructor over here. <laughs> okay, so all right. So this is the next one. Jill sent, let's let's put the thought to this. Jill sent crypto to Michelle. Jill sent it to address OX35 and that ended in BT34. Michelle's address is TRZ3011B. Will it send or will it, it fail? Will fail. It'll fail. 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 It will fail because the address did not match. Jill sent it to the wrong address and that's when the chain breaks and Jill can't get her money back, right? All right, cool. All right. All right, so Jill is sending Katrina Bitcoin. Jill sent USDT to address 19Z4SDX7. Will it send or will it fail? It'll fail. It'll fail. It'll fail. It'll fail. 
It will okay. fail because Jill sent USDT, not Bitcoin. And remember, yeah. it has to match. So you guys are getting this. And then the address was correct, but the token or the coin wasn't correct. So remember, tokens and coins have to match. It have to match the same network. And the address has to start with the same letters, right? Letters or numbers. Well, not exactly. It have to, if it's TRC, you need to start with a T. And we kind of know that, right? And then if it's ERC, BP20, BSC, it starts with a zero X. And if it's Bitcoin, it starts with any number, okay? All right, so let's go to the next one. Jill is sending Jen USDT on ERC20 network. Jill sent USDT to this address, 0XM3, I mean 3M, and then she it was 37GH. Will it fail or will it send? Fail. It will yeah. send. send. Fail. It will really send. Fail. I got it's mixed sand. answers there. It will send. It will it's fail. It, it will send. send because she's sending the correct token oh, oh. coin. Mm -hmm. And she's sending it on ERC because remember, ERC starts with the X. OX, right? OX. No, it will send. Yes. All right. So, hash is a receipt for your transaction through a phone. True. Yes. Oh. Yes. And remember, oh. your trans, your hash is uh, according to the blockchain, the code that verifies it. And it, it comes to a long, 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 long uh, character, um, uh, basically a code that becomes your receipt. All right. So coin staking is very similar to putting your money in a high yield investment. True or false? True. 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 Yes. 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 So that is true. All right. So I think this is the last one. NFTs. Ha can have a rolling ROI, meaning you can make dividends each time the NFT is sold. True or false? Yeah. True. 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 That's the best thing about NFTs is that you continue to make money every time it's sold and you don't have to sell it. It's the next person, the next person. The minimum is 10% from what I understand. You make 10% every time it's sold. All right. All right, so guys, we are open for Q and A, and then we're gonna go get into my little little surprises. Right? So, anybody have any questions before we move on to that? I have a question. This is Kelly. Yes. Hey, uh, I don't really understand when you gave the example of selling um, real estate um, NFT. Okay. How can you sell if it's if you're putting your home up to be sold? How uh -huh. can you keep selling it over and over again? You're not really selling your house. You what are you really selling? No. So you put yourself. You put your um your um. So let me let me um re ask the question back to you so I can make sure you're asking me that um how do you do that when you're not the one who keeps selling it? Are you really selling the house? You're, that's the question right. you're asking, correct? Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. You said you said you you put your um I wrote it down seller's home. Can mm -hmm. sell their home over and over again. So I put my home up as an NFT. Okay. And I sell it. It's it sells. Okay. But so how let can me, it keep be selling? Okay. Let me give you an example of that. Let's just say you you put your your home into an NFT. Putting your home into an NFT is considered a contract on the blockchain mm -hmm. that okay. says that you are going to be selling. Um, you can, you are going to be selling your home, right? So mm -hmm. let's just say you sold your home to Michelle, right? Mm -hmm. yes. You got profit from it because you sold it to Michelle. And because it's under the NFT, the contract says, and Michelle agrees to it, that this is an NFT product. If you sell this house, you are going to get profit and part of your proceeds is going to go to Kelly, 10%, right? So let's just say Michelle said, oh, Jill, you want to buy this house and I buy it. As soon as they, as soon as I um, get, you know, she, Michelle gets her proceeds, you get it too in your wallet. It automatically goes there. You get 10%. And then let's say I sold it to Jen. Jen, whenever I get the proceeds from the major sale, 
but you get 10% and Michelle gets 10% and it keeps rolling on and on and on. Does that make any sense, Kelly? No. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell, tell you why. Because <laughs> for me, it, I'm a realtor, right? So for me, I'm looking at uh, the physical. I own a home and I want to sell my house. Mm -hmm. And I put it for NFT. So now if I sold my house for NFT, put it up as an NFT, and I sold my house to Michelle. Michelle owns. Michelle owns the in, the NFT, but it's not really selling the physical home. Okay, let me explain it this way. The NFT is just the contract you write to say, this is the way you want the house sold. That's the NFT. So you know how like when you are, <laughs> in, like some people, when they sell their houses, they say, oh, I'm gonna sell you the house, but I'm not gonna sell you the lot. And you agree to that. Okay. And then they keep the lot, basically. Well, NFT is just a contract to say, this is the way I want the house sold. I'm going to put it under the NFT codes, so you speak. So I'm going to put it in an NFT code. And then in the NFT code says that every time this house is resold, no matter who it's sold to, I'm going to get 10%. But does that mean at some point, somebody doesn't sell it yeah it could be it could be it could just be sold one time I and mean, you i mean you know but it goes on um depending on how you write the contract it could be forever and you're and you're um you're uh you're so uh, not uh, ice. huh ice is not good to eat like that say it again 